Welcome to Carolina Sculpture Studio. My name is Clint Button. I'm a granite sculptor. Uh, we had a project come in that was a reproduction of a circa 1875 memorial. Uh, original was done in Carrara marble, which uh, isn't commercially available in dimensional sizes like we use. So uh, we sourced some Colorado Yule, which is very similar to Carr, and uh, went to work. It's a pretty complicated project to lay out. This is considered to be a dormered capital uh, with a vaulted apex top. It's a, a eclectic period uh, style uh, where it's, it's a marriage of multiple themes uh, with the dormered top, which typically represents a house, church, you know, heavenly reference. The apex top is a uh, derived from, a, uh, from an obelisk, which is an Egyptian theme, and that also points towards the heavens. So uh, they married the two of them and uh, makes a pretty neat job. It's a little complicated to lay it out, so they sent me a couple pictures in directions to the cemetery and uh, went and took some measurements, mainly measurements here and here to get the height and the depth and uh, some measurements related to the bottom and laid everything out. I uh, started with a, did a quarter pattern, 90 degree mo sketch model. Uh, we let it run a little wild on the bottom just in case there was a difference in, in dimension and we had to match the column so I didn't really know what the bottom would be. But uh, did a, did a, just a template of half of one face and then this was used for both sides, laid it out, put it together. And that was just for reference to make sure where things would go. Then I started carving. Now this is a finishing job. This isn't a typical project that a sculptor or a carver would do. A finisher would do this, but finishers are very rare nowadays. And so my cousin taught me how to do this kind of work. Uh, you have to start by establishing areas of reference so that you can produce them later on. You, you don't just go digging for them and find them like you might think an artist would look for them. So, uh, for example, we started by laying out planes for the tops of these ridges. Cut in four grooves into the stone. And almost all of this was done with, with pneumatic hammers and chisels. Uh, the stone doesn't saw as well. Uh, it was a little crumbly and I didn't trust it. And there's too many sharp edges to break you. If you stress it, it's not good. So this was almost completely done with chisels and then finished with, with rubbing stones. So we started by producing these notches into nearly full depth, flat, 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 flat. And after that, we started on the corners. Now, details like this step, this vertical plum step, uh, same thing, you can't just start carving and hope you land there with all this having to line up. So while I had nice straight references, we cut the corners out in blocks and uh, opened them up. And what that allows is that that interior corner, that edge is the interior corner and then later on you'll cut the stone away to leave that corner so it becomes an edge. And that same type of work was done all the way through. So after we got these corners knocked out, flip the stone over to do the bottom. Now there's a half inch, there's a one inch radius half round on the bottom, uh, or half inch radius half round on the bottom with the check and cove detail. Uh, and this cove, the check, they're all produced the same way. We cut down to a point for reference and then would tip it and then you know we cut a bevel for the for the Scotia and after the bevel was produced then you could round it out. The bottom had to be matched to the column. Of course this is made by man so it's not perfectly dimensionally exact to the ten thousandths or something like a machine piece would be. So the column had a little difference in the width, one side versus the other, so we matched that to the capital, flipped it back over, and then after I had these corners done, then we started lowering this to produce this plane as well. And uh, um, we did the dormers to make sure the dormers were done, uh, get everything roughed in and things were left a little proud, a little crowned, so I could take it down to the final dimension at the end. 
after this is all done, we started lowering these, lowered the centers first, and you do one area, and then you do the next one, and you do the next one, and you do the next one, so that everything matches. And that's in case there is a problem, then you have to shift something, because if this chip, then I had to go down an eighth of an inch, and I already had three of them finished, I'd have to fix all three of them. So you do everything methodically around it, it actually produces the job faster, and it's more accurate. So once those were all pushed down, we tipped them to create the ridge and develop these details, and left a little bit of crown, and it's just a matter of slowly working it into shape. We did a little bit of sanding on the bottom, but the majority of everything was done with stones, with rubbing stones, just old pieces of grinding wheel that you save and you shape a little bit. You dress them into shape with the brick just to rub them into shape to keep them sharp. And you have to be very careful because if pieces are braid off and get underneath it, you can gouge the stone. But, uh, um, and then after everything's put together and everything's good, it's all a little puffy or, or round because you've got some crown in it. Then you start lowering all your surfaces to get everything as flat as possible because this has to be straight, this has to be straight, this has to be flat between them, and it also has to work with the other adjacent sides. So all of these things are done at the end sort of together because we have to settle these planes, get this flat, get this straight. Same thing with here, and the corners have to both agree with the corner so the corners match, and they also have to agree with their complement on the other side so that this is a this is a straight line and these look even, and so you have to just sort of work with it and put it together. Uh, at the end, this came to me. This was this was a home finish from the from the manufacturer. At the end, went through and, and bricked this as well with the same embraces that I used all over the stone in order to have a uniform surface so they all look the same. That will also help them weather the same in the cemetery so that one isn't more polished or more rough than the other, which the rougher one, of course, will weather faster. Uh, this will be, in, before we put this on the, install this in the, in the cemetery, uh, this will be sandblasted with a, with a detail, I believe, is going to be, be a border and a cross on, two, on the front and back, and then the sides will be left blank so they can be uh, detailed later if desired. You can put extra lettering or something like that on it at a future date. So, um, but it's, it's very hard to sell this work. There's very few people that look to work that's literally 150 years old and say, that's what I want. And then when they do, there's very few that afford it. And this family was very generous. Uh, this is a wonderful piece. Uh, it's a very dramatic piece. I have nothing like this in my portfolio. And I'm very excited to, uh, to have completed it successfully and have it come out this well. Uh, I did, some of these are knife edge. They're very sharp. Then others are beveled. And part of that is because these corners were beveled. This was rounded off when it came to be just as a matter of manufacturing what they normally do. And so in order to have some agreement, I left my knife edge, sharp edges here, and other details. I went ahead and beveled them so they all matched approximately the same. And, uh, and so it balanced the stone out so there weren't rounded corners and then everything else was really sharp. So... Uh, but it's a really nice stone, just uh, pretty thrilled to have it in. And when it's installed, a lot of this detail is going to be above eye level, so it's very difficult to see it. We really were surprised when we got up on the ladder at the cemetery to do some measurements and checking uh, to see how much detail there was up above because it's just invisible from the ground level. So, uh, but once again, Nothing like carbon stone. So, uh, my name's Clint Button. I'm a granite sculptor here at Carolina Sculpture Studio, but we do carve other stones, whatever comes in from marble and jade to limestone and serpentine. So, it's, uh, uh, and then, of course, granite. So, this piece of Colorado Yule, 
and uh, it'll be really nice. So, Carolina Sculpture Studio, thanks for coming in.